I knew the story going into the documentary, but there were a lot of things that I learned during the story, uh, the documentary, I should say. Um, the main thing I like about it is they didn't try to portray it as if he was innocent or this is why he committed murder. It was more along the lines of he had some trouble in his youth. He was never kind of corrected along the way. Yeah. And then it escalated into bigger things. Um, but without spoiling too much for people who haven't seen it, there is some shocking information in yeah. the first couple episodes, yeah. in the first episode specifically, uh, that may change your perspective on Aaron Hernandez and who he was as a man. Yeah, um, and I'm just gonna, I'm gonna touch on one of the events uh, because I mean this is public knowledge; it's not new information. Right. But just going back to your point of him just not getting checked, right? You know the incident at, at Florida and the the, the bar fight mm -hmm. with uh, well not not even a fight; he just punches the manager while he's out with Tebow. Um, but had he got punished for that, we may have not gone down this path. You know what I'm saying? Because maybe he does things differently. Because you know, you know, once you once you get arrested or and you got to possibly serve some time, you know, a lot of people ain't trying to do that. Absolutely. <laughs> so you know what I'm saying? They kind of <laughs> clean their act up a little bit. But um, you know, so I've, I watched the first uh, two parts so far. I haven't gotten to the third part yet. I'm gonna try to get that in either tonight or, or tomorrow. I'll watch the rest. But I thought it was very uh, well put together. Definitely new information, like you mentioned, Eric. Um, you know, some things, there's a lot of just different talk about his sexuality that's going on in, in the documentary that you guys are going to, which is interesting um, as far as, you know, just reasoning and, and why mm -hmm. he may have possibly done certain things. Um, so I'm actually looking forward to uh, watching the, the third part. Yeah, there's, there's one part of the documentary that I think will become a, a trending topic and a, and a real talking point moving forward. So... We live in a society now where it's frowned upon to um, physically discipline your kids, mm -hmm. right? right? And in the documentary, they make it clear that Aaron Hernandez's dad ruled with an iron fist. Yeah. He was a no-nonsense guy. Uh, he was physical towards his wife, but he also kept his kids in, in line so that they never got out of pocket or steered down the wrong path. Yeah. And the dynamic of the documentary to me that's interesting, that's, it's been talked about before, but just hearing the stories of his dad in the documentary now, is that when his dad passed during a surgery, uh, everyone says his life kind of spiraled out of control and he lost his way. And I'm curious to get people's reaction to disciplining their children because it was no secret that his dad was disciplining him and keeping him in line. Mm -hmm. And the moment that his dad passed, he became this wild child. Yeah. And there was no one there to check him or keep him in line anymore. Right. Mm -hmm. And I, I think it's gonna become an interesting dynamic again because we are critical of people in the way they discipline their kids. Yep. And I'm not saying that Aaron Hernandez wouldn't have done the things that he was accused of and ultimately did. Yeah. But would it have been different if his pops was slapping him in the back of the head or punching him in the chest yeah. to make sure he didn't get out of pocket? Well, his dad is not going to be there throughout his entire life. So right. even if his dad stopped, would he still act out because he was doing it like most of his life? Well, here's I, the thing. Cause even I think it's the age. Going back to the, the situation at Florida... When he's going down to Florida, he's only 17. He's only 17. So, yeah, so, his, I mean, you know, your dad might still slap right. you upside the head up until you're 21, 22 right. years old. You know what <laughs> right. I'm saying? Yeah. So, had it been a situation like that where his dad finds out and it's like, yo, you don't shape up, you coming back up here. Right. Forget right. that. I don't care how well you're doing down right. at the school, you the man, blah, blah, blah. You get in trouble again, you're coming back up here. Mm -hmm. yeah. And that's, you know what I'm saying? That could change the trajectory as well. Absolutely. I think it was the, it was the perfect... Uh, cocktail of things because mm -hmm. he was at an age where all of us start to think like we know more than what we really do mm -hmm. and he's grown. Yep. And the fact that he wasn't your average size 16 year old. Yeah. Mind you, he's already 6'2", six, 6'3". Six, yeah, he's, exactly. he's a big guy already. So there weren't many people who could keep him in line. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, there aren't many people who could just grab you by the ear when you're that size. Especially yep. when you're all state in Connecticut right. and you're yeah. voted player of the year. Yeah. So there was already a certain level of arrogance. There was already a certain level of yep. rebellion. And then you you take away the one person that was disciplining you and keeping you in yeah. line. And I, prior to that, he hadn't really gotten into right. There was no trouble. Was there was no issues up until he was 16 years old. Yep. And wow. then once that happened, his father died. 
and I, again, I don't want to give away too much of the of the story, but you know, the situation where he didn't feel like he had that same connection with his mother because she had done some stuff that he felt was he didn't agree with. Yeah, yeah. That, he, that he didn't agree with, and again, I don't want to get into too much of the story, but yeah, he didn't agree with that, so that kind of caused a tear in his relationship. So now it's like my father's gone. I I don't feel the same way about my mother anymore because I'm so hurt by her actions. Right. Right. And his older With, brother was away at college. Exactly. And his older brother so was away, who's also right. somebody who could really have. have anybody. Right. So what was mm -hmm. once a tight knit family yep. is one now is over. It's, yeah. Dad's gone. My brother's away at school. Me and my mom don't get along. Yep. Oh, and by the way, I'm 16 and I think I know it all. Then I go down to Florida and I'm the man down there right. to the point where I get in trouble. I get in, I I punch someone dead in the face for no reason. And and get off of, you know, get away with not it. Not only, it, there are two offenses there. He's 17 in a bar. Yeah, exactly. He wasn't even supposed to be at a bar. Yeah. Either. But again, because you are the star recruit coming to the University of Florida and yeah. people know who you are because, again, he was Mr. Connecticut. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It wasn't like he was some two star recruit who walked no, on at Florida. He was the man. He was a five star recruit coming out yeah. of Connecticut right. yeah. who chose to go down the game. And he should have been a first round draft pick, but because of, you know, off, the, off the off field, field yeah. issues, he wound up dropping himself, I think was it the fourth or the fourth fifth? Round. Fourth round. Yeah. Um so, you know, and had that had that happened, he, he thinks might have been a little right. different. Uh and another point too, sometimes we get uh we, we kind of forget how good somebody might have been because we're not in that moment. No. Uh for people that don't know Aaron Hernandez came in the same time as Gronkowski. Yeah. Aaron Hernandez had better stats as a rookie than Rob Gronkowski. Yeah. Aaron Hernandez was actually on the path to probably having a better career yeah. than Rob Gronkowski. Yeah. Small yeah. sample size, but just what he did those first couple years, he was on track to probably have a better Especially career. Especially knowing how much Tom Brady utilizes his tight ends. Yes. And they had a lot of two tight end sets. Yes. So, you know, he was, he was going to be that man. The, the manager... Obviously, he didn't press charges in the situation because I'm pretty yeah. sure he was like, you know what? Is it worth the fines and all that that I'm going to get because I had this minor in this right. bar? <laughs> so I'm going to have to let that slide. I, gotta, I, I literally got to take that one on the chin. Yeah. <laughs> so and maybe then I, if his dad was with him, he probably would have ended up in jail or anything well, like that. Well, if his dad was here, uh, I, he doesn't go to Florida. Because they were. Well, uh, hold on, that's what I'm oh, saying. You know, yeah, yeah, let me get. We yeah. don't want to give too much. Too much. I can't get too much. You're right. You're right. You're right. We were about to get so deep. Yeah, we were about to. We were about to really get yeah. into it and yeah, go back and forth. But <coughs> we want to allow you guys to see it. We'll yeah. we'll circle back and we'll do another segment where we get yeah. into it a little bit more and allow people to come back next week. We're gonna give y'all a week to watch it. Just a little teaser. Yeah, y'all y'all get it in by next week. Listen, we go. We getting into it. Watch it because I want to talk about. Comment on this video. Leave your thoughts and then we'll. Kind of get the discussion going again next week. Yep. yep. That's a fact. Alrighty, so make sure you watch the series. I'm Sierra Jordan with Legend and Two Games and Trip. We'll see you next week. This is Dion Grant from the New York Giants Super Bowl champ, and you're watching Real Fans Real Talk. Real fans, real talk, we as real as you thought.